oil heat service calls. A modern oil-fired heating system requires that many components work together to produce a clean burning efficient flame and to distribute heat efficiently throughout a structure. And yet, complex equipment like this has a lot in common with a simple campfire in the woods. They both need three things, fuel, air, and a source of ignition. Take away any one of these and the fire goes out. Hi, I'm Alan Pratt. When you're out servicing an oil furnace, you're dealing with a lot of components, controls, and systems. There's the oil burner, firebox, heat exchanger, blower, venting requirements, ignition systems, sensors, and safety controls. But to find the root cause of a problem, you're still going to be asking three questions. Is there fuel? Is there ignition? And is there enough air? In this program, you're going to see two typical service calls involving oil furnaces. You'll see the technicians isolate the root cause of the problem by using a step-by-step -step troubleshooting process. Start by verifying the customer's complaint, gathering information, and doing a visual inspection. In reality, these first three steps don't necessarily follow in this order. The idea is to look for the most obvious possible causes of the problem first by asking questions and using your senses. If steps one, two, and three don't reveal the cause of the problem, then you have to do some detective work using your tools and test equipment to isolate the root cause of the problem. Let's take a minute to review how you do that. Isolating the root cause of a problem is a process of elimination. It requires that you understand how a piece of equipment is supposed to operate and how the controls work and in what sequence. Different makes and models of oil furnaces all operate on the same basic principles and have the same types of systems. So even if you're dealing with a make and model of equipment you've never seen before, your knowledge of oil heating systems and how they work will often be enough to help you solve a problem. If additional information about the equipment is needed, you should consult a schematic of the electrical circuits and read the manufacturer's service manual or troubleshooting charts for additional help. After the root cause of the problem has been isolated, do whatever is necessary to correct the problem, test the system, and complete the service call. Not everybody troubleshoots the same way. The sequence of tests you perform will vary according to the equipment, the type of problem, and your troubleshooting skills. The goal should always be to use the least number of steps to isolate the root cause of the problem. Well, now let's take a look at the troubleshooting process in action. From your dispatcher, you have learned that this is a five-year-old oil furnace with air conditioning. All you know is that the unit is not providing heat. So start by finding out what you can from the customer. What seemed to be the problem? Around 2 o'clock this afternoon, I noticed it was getting very, very cold in here, and we had no heat. Did you check to see if somebody turned the thermostat down or the furnace off? I did. I did check the thermostat. It's to, it's set at 72, where I always keep it. So I uh, went down to the basement, checked the circuit breaker. That was fine went back to the furnace and the reset button had tripped. So I pushed the button in again. The furnace started up for about and ran well for about a minute or so. And then it just uh, it just wouldn't run anymore. So I decided it was time I better call for some service. Okay, let me check it out and see what I can find. You know, a visual inspection of the thermostat confirms the thermometer is set and calling for heat. Next, move the fan switch to the on position. Notice that the blower comes on. Then move the switch back to the auto position. This test confirms that the furnace is receiving the correct line voltage and that the primary control is supplying 24 volts to the thermostat. Next, go to the basement. Check the obvious things first, like the oil tank. There's plenty of oil. Next, check the furnace. Remove the burner control panel and inspect the burner to see if it's burning cleanly. But before touching the reset button, check the combustion chamber. 
If you see that the combustion chamber is saturated with oil, or if you smell oil vapor, don't touch the reset button. It could cause an explosion. Instead, you should first open the viewport window for five minutes and allow the chamber to clear. In this case, the combustion chamber is free of oil and vapor, so you can reset the primary control. The burner motor comes on and there is ignition. Complete combustion of the oil seems to be taking place. But after about 45 seconds, the safety switch trips again and the flame goes out. At this point, turn the service switch off. The reset button is what's causing the furnace to shut down. But is it the root cause of the problem? Nope. To find out why it's tripping, you'll need your tools and your meter. The furnace is supplied with a primary control which provides interrupted ignition. This means that the ignition transformer is cut out of the circuit once flame is proven by the CAD cell. The CAD cell responds to light from the flame. If insufficient light enters the CAD cell, it will not prove the flame quickly enough and the safety switch will trip. So start by cleaning the eye of the CAD cell and replacing it in the primary control. Then close the primary control cover and turn the service switch back on. The furnace starts up, but turns off again after about 45 seconds. All indications are that the CAD cell is bad, but you'll have to test it to make sure. You'll need to check the resistance twice, once with no flame and once with the flame burning. To test with no flame, remove the CAD cell leads from the FF terminals of the primary control and attach ohmmeter leads to the CAD cell leads. The meter shows a resistance of 100,000 ohms, which is what it should be with no light entering the cell. Next, test the CAD cell while it is being exposed to the light of the flame. Press the reset button and with the flame burning, test the resistance again. The light of the flame should bring the resistance down to 50 ohms. Here, it is 100 ohms. This is the root cause of the problem. The CAD cell is defective and will need to be replaced. After turning the service switch off, explain the problem to the customer and estimate the cost of replacing the part. Then, with the customer's approval, install a new CAD cell. Before you restart the unit, check the air filter. Then turn the service switch back on. The burner lights up, and after the heat exchanger gets hot enough, the blower turns on. Whenever you get a system up and running after a repair, you need to test it to make sure it's operating correctly. Now this is especially important with furnaces, where the potential for deadly carbon monoxide is involved. Allow the system to operate for a minimum of 10 minutes. Then check the efficiency of the furnace by measuring the flue gas temperature and the level of carbon dioxide. By comparing the stack draft temperature and CO2 percentage, the efficiency calculator shows that the furnace is working in the designed efficiency range. This information can be helpful to a technician if service is required in the future, so it should be recorded on the service invoice. Last of all, replace all panels. Now that the unit is operating correctly, set the thermostat to the desired temperature. To wrap up the service call, explain the charges on the invoice, make sure paperwork is complete, and that you have answered any questions the customer might have. Okay, in that situation, a bad CAD cell was the root cause of the problem. Now let's take a look at a service call where the complaint is the same, no heat, but the heating unit is different. When did you first notice the problem? This morning. It was really cold in here, so I turned up the thermostat, but nothing happened. Did you check the breaker to see if it was tripped for the furnace? No, I did not. I called you right away. That's okay. Let's take a look at it and see what's wrong. Okay. Where's your thermostat located? Over here on the wall. Okay. As the customer said, the thermostat is set and calling for heat, but the furnace is not operating. 
When the fan switch is moved to the on position, no airflow can be felt at a supply register. A quick visual inspection at the furnace reveals that the disconnect is on and the fuse is good. The safety switch on the primary control is not tripped. The unit should be operating. First, check to see if it's getting power. Since the furnace receives voltage through the service switch, start there. Turn the service switch off and remove the cover. Start by placing the meter leads across the line side disconnect terminals. The reading of 120 volts is good, so replace the disconnect cover. Since the disconnect is good, review the furnace schematic next. It shows that line voltage should be present at the black and white wires leading into the primary control. Check it out by removing the primary control and testing the voltage across the black and white wires. The reading of 120 volts is good. The schematic shows that a step-down transformer in the primary control reduces the supply voltage to the thermostat through the RH and W terminals and the primary control relay is energized through the TT terminals at the printed circuit board of the primary control. This is where you have to know what the equipment is supposed to do or you can get completely lost. So let's go over what happens when the thermostat calls for heat. When there is a call for heat, the thermostat closes and completes the 24 volt circuit between the RH and W terminals which in turn energizes the primary control relay. When this happens, the primary control relay contacts close and allow 120 volts to travel through the white and orange wires of the primary control. This energizes the burner motor and the ignition transformer. Okay, now in this service call, you know that the burner motor and the ignition transformer are not energized. So, you start at the thermostat to see if it has completed the 24-volt circuit to the TT terminals of the primary control. A voltage check at the TT terminals shows zero voltage, which explains why the burner motor and ignition transformer aren't being energized, and why the thermostat can't do its job. Since you already know that the primary control is receiving the correct supply voltage, the problem can be in only one place, the step-down transformer of the primary control. Depending upon the type of primary control, you may be able to replace just the transformer. But in this unit, the situation is different. The whole primary control will need to be replaced. Before replacing the part, explain the problem to the customer, provide an estimate of the cost of repairs, and get the customer's permission. Next, turn off the disconnect and attach a lock and tag. Then install a new primary control. Then remove the lock and tag and turn the disconnect back on. The burner and the blower both start. For complete combustion to take place, there must be enough primary air present. Check the furnace combustion process by measuring the over-fire draft and the stack draft. In addition, check the smoke number of the flue gases. The combustion gas indicates a zero smoke reading. After 15 minutes of operation, measure the stack temperature and then the CO2 percentage. According to the efficiency calculator, the furnace is operating within design range. This information should be recorded on the service invoice. Back upstairs, set the thermostat to whatever temperature the customer wants. Complete the service call in the normal way by explaining the charges on the invoice, making sure the paperwork is complete, and that you have answered any questions. The logic you use to eliminate possible causes of a problem develops over time. It's a function of knowing the equipment you're working on and how it's supposed to operate and comparing that with what it's actually doing. Now, as you gain experience in the field, you'll be able to isolate the root cause of a problem in fewer and fewer steps, saving you time and saving the customer money. 
Well, that's all for now. So long.